Welcome to this Rad Server Deep Dive webinar. This time we're going to go inside the department store solution that we introduced in the Rad Server launch webinar a few weeks ago. Our agenda today is we're going to talk about thinking in terms of services and service architectures. Then a quick overview of Rad Server, the product itself, some demonstrations. Then we're going to talk about scenarios for Rad Server single and multi site deployment of your applications, and then we'll take your questions at the end. We've got a full team of presenters on today's webinar. First, I thought I'd start with a conversation with Michael Swindell. Hey, Michael. Hey, David. I think it'd be great to have you talk to everybody about thinking in terms of services instead of applications. When we look at the Rad Studio, the Delphi customer base, and we look at uh, the business solutions that a lot of our customers are bu have built over the years and are maintaining today uh, or evolving, um, most of them fall into two, two different categories. They fall into um, kind of a classic client server architecture where we have a more of a thick client, uh, you know, thick client, often a Windows uh, client um, with a uh, RDBMS backend, either uh, SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, etc. cetera. Um, and these, are, um, these represent the majority of of the established applications that have been around for a long time and have been our customers have been very successful with um, developers have been able to uh, build solutions for a wide variety of industries and in, in healthcare manufacturing retail uh, and they're deployed in just about um, you know every corner of the world and just about every uh, every vertical market and then if we have a, a uh, uh, a category of, of customers that have been building um, multi-tier type of applications and tier solutions, uh, most commonly with our data snap toolkit, where the uh, clients are thinner and there's a uh, middle tier that contains uh, business logic and database access and connection pooling and and things like that. This has been a, popu a, a popular architecture, but we'll talk a little bit about why a more services-based backend is really um, a better backend for you know for 2016 and going forward, and more contemporary and kind of also can help companies really expand their business and create a lot of flexibility both for their development teams but also for um, for their business. Now, if we look back at the classic client-server customers, some of the things that they go through in their in their business is if, when they are selling and marketing their solution, for a customer to spin up a trial, for example, or an eval of a solution. Let's just take a just use a dentist office as, as an example. We have a, a number of uh, of our customers build dental and healthcare type of um, of office solutions. It's in a classic client server architecture, it takes a lot of resources to spin up an evaluation or a trial for an end customer. They need to download the solution, set, they will um, need to set it up and install it on site. They often need to have a database set up on site. When we're talking about a three tier architecture, like a data snap type of a solution, they also need to do that as well. They need to set up that. Windows Server on you know, on site. You know, today, you know, most end users or most customers looking for a solution want to try something out on the web. They want to be able to, you know, log onto a website, fill out a form, click on something, and spin up a uh, you know spin up a solution instantly. And the classic architectures don't make that easy. It's possible to achieve some of that with you know VMs on the fly and Amazon and things like that, but it's not something that is very easy to do from a developer or a business perspective. You know, a lot of the modern newer frameworks and platforms that have come out every, you know, almost every month, most are geared more towards this type of elastic type of business model where you can spin customers up very, uh, very quickly and, and transparently. And that, that helps you sell faster because customers can now try out your application. If you sell it, you don't have to be on site or send us, you know, send technicians out to install them to make the sale. So this type of approach is really gaining a lot of traction and a lot of our customers want to move towards this type of elasticity. And um, in order to achieve this, a more services-based architecture can help developers and help businesses um, achieve this. If you can move the business logic out of these more tightly bound tiers into a more services-based backend, then you're providing a lot of flexibility for hosting the backend. It doesn't have to be hosted on, you know, on site. It can now be hosted in, in any of a number of cloud infrastructures like Amazon or, or, uh, or Google or Microsoft. 
We're also providing a lot of client-side flexibility with ser- with services-based backend. So now we can build the preferred rich client experiences, but we can also provide alternative user experiences, maybe lighter weight web experiences or mobile experiences. And we can also integrate other teams as well. So the classic you know, Delphi built application is Delphi technology on the front end and on the middle tier and on the back end. By moving to a more services based back end, you're really opening up the solution to other teams. You may have uh, other teams in your organization that are using other toolkits, other languages. You know, from a business perspective, this is highly desirable because that team might already have a solution, already you know, an expertise in a particular area that you know you want to wire into the, the Delphi solution. If we talk about the dental office application. There may be a, a team that is building the business side application that's you know the patient application with a with a rich front end and windows and some mobile clients that same organization may have a completely a, a whole nother team that specializes in the imaging equipment and imaging interfaces and they may be um, an acquisition and they may have expertise in code and technology in a completely different you know, completely different languages and frameworks so by using a services-based backend, we can couple in other technologies and teams in a, in a much more flexible way. So I know you've been talking with a bunch of our customers as part of building up the strategy and the solution with Rad Server. They're interfacing with insurance services, payment processing services, things that may even be outside of exactly. their own architectures, right? Exactly. So what we're steering towards with you know with rad server and specifically with services based backends is to think about your application differently so rather than think about your your application as a front end and a back end to think about the functions of your applications as a collection of services that can be available for integration to various clients or from you know web app, you know web applications by putting them into services you're giving your yourself and you're giving your business a lot the flexibility to adapt to new technologies to acquisitions to new product ideas and so this is something that most of the customers that we talk to today i would say the majority of them have some type of services based initiative which is either introducing new services or it's transforming their old business logic or their old their their old applic- older applications into a more services based architecture what we wanted to do was to make this easy for our customers to basically you know, make it easy for you to take older applications and older code and and be able to repurpose that and migrate that into a services based architecture and we wanted to be able to do this so that you didn't have to th- throw anything away you can reuse everything that you've invested in over the years and migrate to this into a services based architecture if you're spinning up a new uh, application we all know that you know delphi and c++ builder are the fastest ways to develop business logic and and, uh, and and applications. If you're building a new application, we want to encourage uh, developers to use the fastest tools available, Delphi and CBuilder, to build these types of applications and services. So Rad Server works for both. It works for new applications that you're going to spin up with completely new code and uh, works well for uh, migrating existing code either from three-tier architectures or n-tier architectures or client-server architectures into this services-based backend. Now, I put up Martin Fowler's uh, microservices landing page. There's lots of information there. I, I put some of the, the listings that he had on that page for common characteristics, and I think developers on this webinar will look at these lists and say, that's what I've been doing with Delphi. That's what yeah. I've been doing C++ Builder. I've been not only using components, but I've been componentizing my applications uh, into reusable objects, into business logic, into data snap servers, remote methods, and so on. And now with Rad Server, all of these kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, the, the concept of, a, of services is very similar to the concept, you know, the original concepts that we had with components, where we're, you know, we're packaging uh, you know, functionality into very easily consumable components. The difference now is that rather than being tightly bound to some, you know, into your rich client application or tightly bound into Delphi, um, by creating these services with very interchangeable standards like REST and JSON, you're now building these services that can be consumed by virtually any type of application or language or framework. So it's really providing a lot of flexibility 
and uh, um, and helping you really get a lot more value out of the code that you're you know they're building or the code that you've already built and you want to you know take it forward into a, a more flexible arc. It's very extensible. Uh, it also supports both um, a, a you know a more a micro a microservices uh, based approach, which is really breaking. It, it's you know pretty simple, just breaking the the services down into individual packages for each endpoint. And uh, Rad Server supports that, um, and that can provide you with a lot, you know, a, a lot of flexibility with scale, uh, and you know, scale and failover, and uh, um, and works very well with today's web architectures, especially, you know, certainly today with IIS and all of the um, in the, uh, the the scale and failover capabilities that are part of that architecture. So, Michael, at the Rad Server launch webinar a few weeks ago. We did an introduction to Rad Server and some pieces and parts, but I think it's good to to go quickly through again uh, an overview of not only what Rad Server is, how do you think about developing for it, and also uh, what's included in Rad Server. Sure. So, I think uh, there's really three key components to Rad Server, or three key function um, pieces of functionality. The first is REST endpoint publishing. And uh, this is kind of the, the services part of, of, of the services architecture. Um, and uh, what that means is we're taking business logic written in Delphi or C++, and we're plugging it into the RAD, into RAD server. And RAD server is then publishing, your, uh, publishing REST endpoints that can, can be consumable by virtually any type of you know, language or framework. Um, so that's kind of its really a, kind of its core f- piece of functionality. The the next is integration middleware. Um, so we ha- built into Rad Server is um, uh, is uh, integration with RDBMSs um, based on the FireDAC technology. So if you're familiar with FireDAC and cl- um, uh, that is uh, um, part of Rad Server, um, where you can do you know, connect out to SQL Server and uh, uh, or uh, um, Oracle, I, IBM DB2, MySQL. Or even other services as well, right? Correct. Cloud services, uh, also integration with now with IoT devices as well. So we have a smart um, a, a framework for connecting uh, in uh, uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi smart devices or IoT devices into the RAD server backbone. And there's a whole edgeware component to that so that you can locate these anywhere in your uh, in your business location. Um, and then the last piece is application services, and this is about providing out-of-the-box functionality. So not just taking the, com- the the code that you write and putting it and publishing it, but Rad Server has a set of functions that are built in uh, or f- uh, pre-built functionality uh, um, that's available to you use in your application. In fact, if we go to the next, uh, move to the next slide. Um, kind of part of the development lifecycle of of a Rad Server application, some of these. Um, Pieces are uh, um, are part of those uh, application services. So things like um, user management, push notifications, uh, even um, simple JSON data storage um, is all are all services that are that are provided out of the box in Red Server. Um, and the, it's a very simple life cycle of creating your you know your server endpoints from your from your code, uh, integrating with your um, backend database. Uh, um, if you're if you want to make it really lightweight, you don't even have to use a, a, a backend database. You could use the simple da- JSON data store that's built in. Uh, but I think most customers will use the SQ, uh, you know a more powerful SQL type of data store. Um, and uh, then adding application services. So one of the more popular uh, things um, in uh, Rad Server is the user management and user directory services. So there's a full uh, user management and authentication system built in with access control, etc. So you can create create users and authentic and, and they can authenticate, and then um, you can control what you which users and groups have access to which APIs and parts of the applications. Um, and then it's very simple to deploy. Uh, uh, it's a very um, a very simple sim- system to deploy. Rad Server is an application itself, so it's not something you build like back in the data snap days. Um, it's a server, and you load your modules into it. It has a management console that you can um, add users, manage you know manage your services, and also monitor and uh, and analyze them. So there's a full analytics engine built into the server that measures and reports on all of the API utilization and, and access to your um, application. 
And then, of course, um, it uh, works very well with uh, VCL and FireMonkey for building rich client, uh, rich client applications um, uh, that will connect and consume these services. So uh, you can build Windows, iOS, Android, uh, um, or even wearable, you know, Motorola, you know, uh, and, and Samsung wearable, you know, wearable devices and Android devices. Uh, but being REST-based and REST-JSON-based, we you can also use other toolkits and languages. Uh, so if you have other teams that are using other languages or frameworks, um, they can consume these services in Java, C Sharp, Python, uh, JavaScript. Um, and uh, that means that it works plays well with uh, web technologies as well. So web teams using things like you know Angular and uh, and JavaScript and HTML5. So EMS was our launch of of our services based backend, and EMS stands for Enterprise Mobility Services. EMS um, was recently introduced and provided the REST endpoint publishing capabilities. EMS is being deprecated, and the key things that we've done, we're doing with Rad Server is it includes all of the EMS technologies. It's the you know, the latest version for Berlin, and it has all of the everything that EMS had. Um, but we're also adding in our um, proximity and location services that are based on beacon fence. So you have a full license to that, to use beacon fence in your solution. We're also adding in Think Connect technology, which is a framework for connecting to smart devices. And the edgeware, which is very important for these type of these larger solutions, where you need to connect in these smart devices into your uh, services-based backend. And basically, you can think of ThingPoint as like access points for smart devices into your solution. All of that is, is included in the pricing. Is, it's a, a more straightforward, simple, and more affordable solution in RAD Server to deploy than uh, was EMS when it was introduced. So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at how to build up RAD Server packages, how to implement them, how to connect clients to them, uh, how to use them on local server using either the developer edition or the deployment edition. And then we'll also show how you can use the, the ISAPI DLL version of EMS to deploy both locally inside your own firewall, as well as deploy to a cloud, in, in this case, uh, Amazon Cloud.